You have some amazing pieces of sunstone rough. Yeah. Are these the ones you were taking to the shows, or are these still un unseen by the public? Uh, most of them are unseen by the public. I sent to my friend to look over and see and make me uh, make me a ride up because I don't know how to make it, how to measure it, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you see riding on it, he did it and he just sent it back to me. Right. And he kept four or five, took it to Tucson and he sold it all. But he just had a terrible surgery. His ankles disappeared. He had to have a... Oh, you know, ouch. Oh, yeah. So he has the weight here, Golda Schiller, Schiller issues about half this. And then he kind of made notes on some of the nicer pieces about yeah. what he saw. He was with me uh, three years ago. Three years ago, he was with me at uh, Tucson, not Tucson, up here, uh, 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 a show up, up north. And uh, because I want to say goodbye to Ron before he dies. They've been friends and they went up to uh, um, Oregon to look for uh, those stones. Mm. My wife and I went to Oregon. We went to uh, the Dust Devil Mine and yes, we dug and uh, yeah. didn't find anything nearly this good, though. Did you all dig these? He did, yeah. Wow, you guys hit a really nice pocket then. Well, he, also, he used to carve for the Dust Devils, and Dust Devils used to take it to Germany to sell those carvings. That's true, yeah. They did. They had German cutters, too. Also? No, no, they just uh, they didn't. They just uh, do a, a finished carving, what uh, Ron and other artists do. Your husband's last name was Wilson, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ron Wilson. He's got the name. You know, rings a bell. I wonder. He might. People in the Sunstone circles might know him. Oh yeah. They were just sitting in butt naked, you know, <laughs> digging, digging, <laughs> sitting in a tub. <laughs> you know, I, I remember the owner of the mine, you know, he, after we got done digging. <laughs> no, what other one? Uh, they, I, uh, Don. Yeah, Don, he brings out a big jug of moonshine and, <laughs> you know. Have you been up there? We we went, my wife and I, about 10 years ago, and we, we paid to spend the night there in one of his little trailers. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, do the, the free digging, I think yeah. it was, and then pay for what you find. Mm -hmm. Didn't find a lot, but it was fun. Mm -hmm. Made for a really good story. This all of them come from there, but this was uh, off and on. Some of these pieces are just huge. I think Don's wife died. Uh, I think his, his, her name was Rose or something. Yeah, I like that. You know, I get the Oogle Stones and I get a history lesson. Mm -hmm. This one has just gorgeous red in it. The reds are, of course, what make them more expensive. Yeah, green is the most expensive. Right. Uh, and you can Schiller in there. You can find some people like the Schiller, some don't. I like it. I think it's what I think really... the Schiller makes this whole stone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what is going to isolate this from something else. It's a very big stone. I think, matter of fact, I have somewhere his Ron's carving in here. Did you get any kind of idea of value for the rough? For what? The rough material. Um, did, did the fellow who looked at it for you, did he give you any kind of indication of its value or price per carat or gram or what all no, of it was worth? No, no, because uh, he said he wouldn't even do that to give him a rough thing because it's changed so rapidly. That's true. And he'd go to... Um, 
go to a Tucson every year, so he can so just call me, send it to me, and I will give you a proper pricing. People don't like to price for me. Well, I mean. The kind of almost a villages thing, he doesn't want to get into it. It can be really difficult to price somebody else's yes. stuff because you yes. don't know how much they paid for it or how much you want. You see this beautiful red. I'm just trying to do a video here of everything. I'm going to send it to some sunstone people and maybe some of them will want to get some of it why not indeed and maybe somebody if we get lucky find a serious buyer will say send me the whole tray would be wonderful which is kind of where i you know i'm kind of curious i'll have to look up and see what prices are going for at the mine that would be the way to start is talk to some of the groups and say hey what are you selling your your clears and your good shillers and your peaches and your mm -hmm. reds for in rough form these days and then you just beat their prices by a little bit. And yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, you don't want to irritate anybody and you don't want try, trying to give it away. But, you know, and then you can get somebody, a carver or a faceter would be really interested in this mm -hmm. stuff. Casual rock hounds, not so much. No. They're not going to want to drop the thousands of dollars no. that it would cost to buy all of this. I used to love spending time at, at the Genie. Yeah. It's hard on my back though. To, to constantly bend over and, and hunch and work. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing a little bit less. I cut now just for pleasure, just for myself, every now and then, for fun. I might go to a rock show and I might see something like this that I really want. I think it's Ron learned it on a hard way that he uh, he's better off to buy it already half done or all done and he can just uh, uh, manipulate it as such to, to make a jewelry out of it. That's what I found. It's I can't pay myself enough or get paid enough to do mm -hmm. faceting or cabbing, yeah. um, but I can buy faceted stones and put them in pieces of jewelry. So for me, cutting is what you're buying is it's like going to the movies. You're buying an experience and mm -hmm. and the fun of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was it was that way with me and opals. That was my wife and I's first love was rough opals. You know, because you could get them for a lot cheaper than a nice opal. Yeah. And most of the time you would you would finish cutting and you would end up with something worse off than you started with. But at least you had the memory of cutting it and you could see you cut it yourself. Yeah, I know he is so nice. Nice, nice. First class opal. Almost through this box here. Yeah, yeah. Opal piece is $6,000, black opal. Wow. That's what Ron paid for it? That's how, uh, no, we don't pay for it that much. Oh. But that's what it was. I took it down to Beverly Hill to one of the uh, opal dealers. And that's what he said.